All right. So the rest of these fly by a lot quicker um, because there's um, you know less less to them. Um, but um, this one might be a little bit longer um, in the sense that aces and arbs do have a, a few other you know mechanisms to them, or they're a little bit um, more complex, or you know there's a few more things to know about them. Needless to say, um, aces and arbs they work in a way where they actually block what's known as the RAS or the renin angiotensin aldosterone system. I'm only telling you this because um, it's going to make more sense about some of the interventions, some of the problems that can happen with these meds. But don't think you have to have the RAS memorized. Um, this little chart over here, you do not need to know about it. Um, but just keep in mind that as a whole, normally, the way that my body works is that, let me take a sip. The way that my body works um, when I have low flow, like uh, my kid, I don't know why I said low flow like that. Um, um, low flow, um, is, is that my kidneys get their feelings really hurt. So like if I have low flow, my kidneys are like, oh no, I'm not getting enough flow. So what they do is they, um, they stimulate this RAS, this renin angiotensin aldosterone system. So usually the RAS is my protector against low blood pressure or low flow. Um, so it gets stimulated and then it starts to secrete and there's all this like, you know, chain process. And the end goal, the end thing that happens is I hold on to more sodium. And I hold on to more water. Um, well, this is great when my blood pressure is low or when my flow is low. But what can happen in hypertension is the kidneys think there is low flow, but all there is is hypertension. So remember how I kind of talked about the hose? You could have a hose that, um, you know, has all this pressure in it. So the pressure is high, but there's not a lot flowing out because it's all constricted. And so this is what happens with... Um, the kidneys is, is that all they know is they're not getting the flow that they want, um, but the blood pressure is actually high. So they're secreting and they're, they're holding on to sodium and holding on to water. Um, but my blood pressure is already high. I already, you know, I could even have a high volume and this is going to just make it worse. So the point of ACEs and ARBs is they block that system. They block me from holding on to more water and holding on to more sodium. So that's how they work to decrease or lower my blood pressure. Um, let me see. Um, so the other thing to consider is one part of this, the end um, part of this, the, or the end part of the RA is um, aldosterone. Um, and so um, aldosterone, the way that it works is it um, normally um, is what it's going to do in a patient where the RAS is stimulated. Like I said, my blood pressure is low, the kidneys stimulate the RAS. What's going to happen is that aldosterone is going to be that component that's going to help to hold on to sodium. And um, sodium and potassium work opposite in the cell. And so by holding on to sodium, it automatically wastes potassium. So normally my RAS system causes me to lose potassium. But with ACEs and ARBs, I block the RAS. So what's going to happen if I'm blocking the RAS? I'm going to let go of sodium. But if I'm letting go of sodium, what do I hold on to? Hmm. Let's see. Well, that was really dramatic for nothing. Come on. <laughs> so now it's changing. All right. So yes, I always, I, like, I mean, I literally, I was in drama club when I was in high school. Um, but yeah, like I was not a good actress at all. And um, yeah, I, I cannot, I would love to have like seamless transitions, but I'm really just awkward AF. Um, so anyway, um, here's some, uh, some of the meds you want to always think about ACE inhibitors. They uh, end in Pril. Um, and so there's some, um, you know, cool thing, some cool mnemonics I made drinking bottles of wine and, uh, I would call them, uh, when I was a early educator, um, it's cause I'm super old now. Um, so what we want to think about that's different is we're blocking the system that used to hold on to a lot of sodium and water. So it's going to help me to not hold on to as much sodium and water. Um, also by blocking the RAS, it decle decreases, decreases vasoconstriction because another way that the RAS system works is it clamps down. Now, I don't want any more clamping down in hypertension. It's going to make things so much worse. So um, uh, ACE inhibitors relax the blood vessels and they also block aldosterone, um, which causes me to let go of sodium, but therefore hold on to potassium. So the big things that you want to remember with ACE inhibitors, what's different um, is going to be that it can cause an increase in potassium. And if you remember, if we back up, you know, if you're kind of watching these consecutively, we talked about um, potassium sparing diuretics that we don't want to take them at the same time as ACE. And this is why, um, because they can um, cause a lot of harm um, uh, because there's two sources of high potassium. If I take a potassium sparing diuretic and an ACE inhibitor, both of those are going to increase my potassium, which could lead to death. 
Um, there also is a risk for angioedema with these patients. Um, so it, it's not common, but it's possible. So the, the thing that most people remember at ACE inhibitors is this cough. Um, so, and you're going to see mixed things. And this is what I hate about some of these things. Teaching them is so hard because like, um, you know, sometimes I think I get a handle and I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, this is what the answer would be. But then students show me like a practice question online and it contradicts everything I'm saying. But sometimes in the same, you know, resource, they'll have two questions that contradict each other with opposite answers. So here's the thing with the cough. The cough just has to do with the way that um, the, like, you know, it's, it's a long story, but it has to do with the way that the RAS gets blocked. And there's this little thing called bradykinin in the lungs that gets blocked. And it leads to this kind of like nagging cough. It can come on early, it can come on late. Um, most of the time the cough is harmless, but here's two ways that it could be harmful. One, if I have a long-term cough, I'm going to be annoyed as hell. And I'm not going to maybe want to take my medicine. I don't have any symptoms of my high blood pressure. And now you want me to take a medicine that's going to make me cough all the time? No, thanks. Um, so, you know, like this is what, you know, some people's mentality can be. Um, so you want to kind of consider that, that it could lead to non-compliance. But the other thing is sometimes that cough, it may be harmless or it could be an early sign of this angioedema. Um, so in general, what we say with the cough is even though it's probably harmless, report it to the doctor because one, either it could affect compliance or two, it could be a sign of that angioedema. So it always should be investigated further. Oh, I'm this mushroom, sorry. Um, crazy cat. Um, my life is really not as much of a mess as it, I make it seem. And um, But um, it just seems like I start a video and then my life falls apart. Anyway, um, so aside from that, the other thing to consider is because it works through the kidneys, it also can lead to ki decreased kidney function. So if I have a patient come in um, and they're on an ACE inhibitor and their kidneys are hurting like they're in acute kidney injury, we take them off their ACE and we put them on something different temporarily until their kidneys are doing better. Um, remember the only person that ACEs are good for, um, that have kidney problems are going to be our diabetics. They're, they're, um, nephroprotective or they help protect the kidneys in diabetic patients, but all other patients they can cause harm to. Um, so we're usually taking them off of that. So in other words, with this patient, before I give this med, I need to check my kidney function. I need to assess if they have a cough. I need to check their potassium and make sure that their airway is looking Muy bueno. And it's not that I need to do a deep airway assessment, but I'm definitely looking, making sure there's no signs. If you don't remember angioedema, it's that like swelling in the airway. Um, so as a reminder, the labs that we do to measure kidney function, we usually look at creatinine. That's going to be the um, more accurate um, lab that we're going to use. Now, I'm not saying it's the most accurate. It's not the most accurate for kidney function, but it's the most common one we get that we used to see how their kidney function is doing on a day-to-day -day basis. So the normal for that is around 0 0.6 to 1.2. Sometimes you're going to see 0. Um, 7 to 1.3 or, or 0 0.8 to 1.3. You're going to see varied, but in general, if you know 0 0.6 to 1.2, you should be good to go um, for my school. Um, so the teaching here is going to be very similar for the teaching about potassium sparing diuretics. So if you want to, in your head, just kind of say like, okay, ACE inhibitors and potassium sparing diuretics, similar teaching in that I don't want anything that's going to increase my um, potassium levels more than they already are. So potassium sparing diuretics, potassium supplements, salt substitutes, all of those things are a no-go. So you might be wondering if there's ACEs, what the heck are ARBs? So these work just like ACE inhibitors, um, except the one benefit that they have is they work a little bit later in that RAS reaction chain. And as a result of this, they can have similar, you know, good effects, but there's no cough. So this is the other reason why we want to report a cough. If a patient's coming and having a cough, it's not like we have to tell them, oh, sorry, it's just going to happen. We can actually switch them over to this angiotensin receptor blocker, especially if it's really nagging them. Them and it's um, keeping them from compliance with the medication. Um, so the downside to this, this, uh, you know, this does have similar effectiveness, but it can take a little while to work because I know people ask me all the time, they're like, well, why don't they just start them on the ARB? Well, it does take longer to work. And there might, I think that the ACEs are just longer tested maybe and utilized, but I could be totally talking out my butt right now. Um, this, um, everything else, the teaching, um, the concerns for potassium and creatinine, um, uh, angioedema can still happen. Um, so we just want to kind of keep in mind, this is exactly the same ex um, as the ACE inhibitor, except there's no cough and it can take a little bit longer to start working. Um, and then you remember the Sartans will stop your cough from starting. So yes, that's it. All right. Oh, let's do this one. All right. So a nurse checks the order for a client orders for a client and notices the following potassium chloride, 20 milligrams PO daily, and then lisinopril. 
10 milligrams PO daily. Is this safe to give or is there anything we need to check or clarify first? So I'm giving an ACE inhibitor, which is the pril. It makes my blood pressure chill. <laughs> but what did we just learn about ACE inhibitors? ACE inhibitors can increase my potassium. So because they can increase my potassium, I don't want to take any potassium supplements. I don't want to take any salt substitutes or do any um, of the potassium sparing diuretics, anything else that's going to increase my potassium. So um, we caught this, I would need to clarify first. Um, it's not to say that everyone with a, on the center is going to have a sky high potassium. I'm they maybe there's something else that's going on here. Maybe they're on the center and they're also received a diuretic recently and their potassium's low. It's possible, but I would clarify this order first, um, just because giving this and the potassium could lead to harm um, with that increased potassium. All right, the next one is calcium channel blockers. See you for that one.